it's Alex the Bookubus. Today I'm going to be sharing with you a bit of a book haul. I recently took a trip back to the UK and came home with a bunch of books because of course I did and there are also a handful of books that I just yeah have picked up recently at some library book sales so yeah I figured why not do a little book haul video to share with you some of my recent finds. Some of the books that I brought back from the UK were actually presents from my sister and she's always yeah absolutely brilliant at finding <laughs> some amazing books in charity shops so yeah a huge thank you to her and not only that but you might be wondering what this amazing thing I'm wearing is and it's a jumper that my sister knitted for me I'm actually gonna cry again. I cried when she gave it to me and then yeah I'm getting emotional again. But I mean look at it. It's the most amazing thing ever. I mean come on we've got ghosts, we've got bats, we've got cats, jack-o-lanterns, skulls and crossbones, ravens, spiders, skeletons and a line of booze and bones. I mean oh my god like this is literally just the most incredible thing ever. So of course I wanted to wear this and share it with you all and uh, yeah just give a big thank you to my sister because she's amazing and we had such a good time on holiday together. Um, yeah it was just me, my husband, my mum and my sister and we just had such a wonderful time together. And if you are interested uh, my sister does have a website, she is a knitter and she also gets her own wool made from the sheep that she raises so yeah she's doing all of these amazing things and um, is super talented and yeah such an incredible hard worker um yeah so anyway I will leave a link to her website in the description below if you want to go check that out her company is called Beecroft and yeah anyway I am just absolutely just thrilled to bits with this jumper because it's the most amazing thing ever and it's wool and it's so cozy and comfy. Anyway, I've spent a lot of time talking about non-bookish things but I'm sure you can understand why. So onto the books and I'm going to start off with the ones that were some presents from my sister. So we'll start off with a banger. Um, this is a Point Horror Unleashed book. So this was a spin-off from the Point Horror books that we got in the UK and I believe these ones were all UK authors, uh, whereas the Point Horror books were all US authors um, that were kind of just reprinted, um, repackaged, you know, in the UK for the Point Horror series. Um, but yeah, Point Horror Unleashed, um, these ones are pretty rare. I don't have any of them <laughs> other than this one um, because some of them can be quite hard to track down and I just haven't really been in a position to, yeah, be able to make that a mission of mine. So. Anyway, I'm very happy to have this one. It is Low Lake by Roger Davenport. I'm super excited to give this one a read. She also got me a point book. There was so many point series that we had in the UK. There was, this was just like the regular point series, but there was also point romance, point fantasy, point crime, to name a few, um, as well as point horror, obviously. Um, but anyway, this is called The Foggiest by David Belbin. And yeah, looks like it could be a good read. She also got me Ghost House by Claire McNally, which has this really amazing cover. Sorry for the glare, but gotta get that metallic effect going on. And the tagline is, the horror has just begun. Yeah, a great cover with a creepy kid and a creepy doll. And the back says, in the blood of the innocent burns the flame of evil. We've also got a Virginia Andrews book. This one is Lightning Strikes. And uh, it looks like we've got London in the background here uh, with like the Houses of Parliament and stuff. So interesting. I didn't know there was a series set there. If anyone's read this one, you'll have to let me know. We've got a couple of kids books, which look super fun. Anyone else remember David the Gnome? Uh, but yeah, we've got Klaus and the Vampires. That actually looks terrifying and we've got The Ghost of Black Lake Castle. So yeah, a couple of spooky gnome related books here. Um, yeah, <laughs> super cute. If I can squeeze these into my Halloween reading, I will, but it's already a bit overwhelming, honestly. We will see. Um, she also found me this Goosebumps book and it's a two in one. Um, and I think this is an ex library copy because they always had these plastic covers, um, yeah. 
Uh, anyway, this one includes Calling All Creeps and Vampire Breath. So yeah, super cool. And also this hardback book, which is, let's see, A Biography of Dracula by Harry Ludlam. And it is the life story of Bram Stoker. I, yeah, honestly don't know too much about Bram Stoker um, other than, you know, the obvious. So this looks like an interesting read. And uh, yeah, it looks like it originally came out in 1962. Um, but yeah, there's the title page for you. So yeah, cool. And then one other book um, that she actually uh, gave to my husband because she got him some amazing gifts as well because she's awesome like that. Um, but I wanted to share here because I thought you might be interested. It is Haunted Britain by Anthony D. Hippisley Cox. Amazing name, amazing cover. And um, yeah, this is a guide to supernatural sites frequented by ghosts, witches, poltergeists, and other mysterious beings. Um, and this just looks like the coolest book ever, honestly. I love books about ghosts, um, especially older books. Um, I don't know, the new ones just don't do it for me. <laughs> but this originally came out in 1973. And yeah, I'm definitely going to be uh, borrowing this <laughs> from my husband for sure. Next up are a bunch of books that I found in charity shops uh, while we were in the UK. Um, we spent quite a bit of time in Edinburgh and yeah had a couple of jaunts out to some charity shops. Um, we did plenty of other things while we were there too but um, yeah we all love a good charity shop so why not. Um, and I found some good things. So first up is The Lake by Richard Lehman. This is one of his that I don't already have and, you know, can't pass up a layman, so was happy to find that. I also got another Virginia Andrews book. This one is Heaven and great vintage cover here, so couldn't leave that one behind. It says her name was Heaven, her life was anything but. I also found two Charles L. Grant books. Um, this one is The Sea Harp Hotel, The Third Chronicle of Greystone Bay, and it looks like this is an anthology, um, I think. Yes, um, so this came out in 1990. Beautiful cover. Yeah, I think this uh, series of anthologies are all based in this, yeah, kind of fictional, atmospherically spooky town of Greystone Bay. I think I have another one in the series, so I was happy to find another. And then also Nightmare Seasons, which has a great cover too. This one I believe is a novel and um, it's set in the world of Ox Run Station. I did just recently read the first book in that series, uh, The Hour of the Ox Run Dead, and I enjoyed it. So yeah, I'm happy to have another one in that series. I was also really stoked to find a Sean Hudson book. This one is Shadows and it has an amazing cover. This copy is quite beat up, but I wasn't gonna say no. And this one was actually not in a charity shop, but sometimes supermarkets in the UK will have some like secondhand books for sale um, and the money will go to charity. They're usually just ones that, you know, members of the public donate. And at some point, yeah, we went to do some shopping in a co-op. And once we'd gotten through the checkout, I was like, ooh, books. <laughs> and I was really happy to find this one. They also had a copy of Michelle Remembers, um, but, I already have a copy and, you know, I was already accumulating quite a lot of books. So at that point I was like, I don't need it. But I did take a picture of it because it was a cool cover. A couple of newer titles, one of them being The Silent Companions by Laura Purcell. I've heard great things about this, so I was really happy to find a copy. I think this is, yeah, gothic and spooky and I'm, um, yeah, excited to have a copy and I'm looking forward to reading it. Another new one, or new-ish, is Pine by Francine Toon. And this um, was shortlisted for the Bloody Scotland Crime Debut of the Year. Um, so yeah, because we spent a lot of our holiday in Scotland, um, we all love Scotland. And um, so yeah, it was cool to find this book. And it's also um, part of the premise mentions Halloween. So I did get to thinking I could try, try and squeeze this one in for my October reading, but I don't think it's going to happen. But I very much look forward to reading this at some other point. This one is described as a gothic thriller and yeah, really looking forward to it. 
I found this copy of Meanwhile in Dopamine City by DBC Pierre. I read a couple of his books and enjoyed them. I haven't read any of them recently, but I enjoyed them when I did read them in the past. Um, I think his most famous one is probably uh, Vernon Godlittle. I haven't heard anything about it, but yeah, I figured why not? I'll grab it and uh, give it a read sometime. Okay, two more for the charity shop books. I got a copy of A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess, and this is maybe not the exact edition that I had when I was a teenager, but it definitely had the same artwork. Uh, so I was just really stoked to find this. Um, this is like a penguin edition. And I was obsessed with A Clockwork Orange when I was a teenager. Uh, that's a whole story. Um, but yeah, I read the book and then was incredibly disappointed to find that the film was banned in the UK. But I ended up going on a day trip to France one time and I was like, oh, I wonder if they have A Clockwork Orange. So yeah, I came home with a copy of Orange Mechanique on VHS and proceeded to watch it like a million times. Totally, totally normal behaviour. Um, I also was very excited to find this book, which is the screenplays for Shallow Grave and Trainspotting by John Hodge. Um, these are two of my favourite films. I mean, I'm a huge horror fanatic, but outside of horror, these are two of my all-time favourites. So I was just really pleased to find this and uh, yeah, look forward to giving it a read sometime. Um, I already have the Criterion edition of Shallow Grave and I, they just recently announced that they're going to be releasing Train Spotting. I think it's in January. So yeah, my husband already knows that that's on <laughs> like my birthday wish list. Um, and anyway, while we were in Edinburgh, I also made him <laughs> take a pilgrimage with me to one of the Shallow Grave filming locations, which is in Edinburgh. It is near the city centre. And uh, yeah, we took a little trek out there to take some photos. Uh, I was such a nerd, and uh, but I was super happy to see it because I just love that film. I think it's a, it's a film that I not only love, but it also kind of marks, I think, a point in my life when I just became like a fan of film, if that makes sense. It was just one of those experiences that really made me interested in film um, outside of them just being entertainment. Um, and just, yeah, really made me kind of look out for, you know, certain directors or actors and kind of delve deeper into, um, you know, the not so obvious films, I guess. Um, but yeah, so anyway, rambling there, but if you've not seen Shallow Grave, I highly recommend it. Okay, and next up are a handful of books that I got at library book sales. Um, and then I have one book that is an advanced copy from the publisher, which is exciting. Um, but yeah, first up, uh, I actually just found this the other day. We went to a library book sale and this was the one and only book that I found. So it was a bit disappointing, um, but I was still very happy to find this one in particular. This is Kunja Wife by Fritz Lieber. And yeah, this is just a book I've heard good things about and have been wanting to read. And then um, last year or the year before, I think, um, I watched Burn Witch Burn, also known as Night of the Eagle, which is a really great witchcraft film and it's based on this book. So yeah, that made me doubly want to read the book. So yeah, I was just super excited to find this. Um, it's about a man who doesn't realise his success is down to his wife performing witchcraft. Um, and then when he finds out, yeah, things happen. So yeah, I really enjoyed the film and I'm looking forward to reading the book. And yeah, this is a really cool cover. Uh, the rest of the uh, secondhand books here are ones that I got at a different library book sale um, in September. And we've got Morbid Curiosity by Deborah LeBlanc. Uh, this is a leisure or leisure uh, horror book. And um, yeah, it sounded really good. I think it's about a teenage girl getting into some dark rituals and I'm just like, say no more, I am in. So <laughs> I'm really looking forward to this. This one came out in 2007. So yeah, I'm here for it. I also found another Richard Lehman book there. This one is Darkness Tellers. Ouija board, Lehman, again, say no more. That's really all I need to know. Yeah, this is one of his that I did not already have. So I was really happy to find it. I found a few vintage YA books. 
We've got uh, Fear Street, Super Chiller. This one is the New Year's Party. So yeah, maybe I'll give this one a read uh, when that time of year rolls around. And I also got another Fear Street. This one is The Overnight, which has a really great cover with the yeah group of people around this campfire. Very spooky. I found a couple of Lois Duncan books that I didn't already have. We've got Down a Dark Hall and A Gift of Magic. Whoops, sorry, glary. Um, but yeah, looking forward to reading these. I really do need to read more of her work. I've got a handful of her books on my shelves and I think I've only read one of them. So yeah, need to get on that. And then uh, talking about the Point series of books uh, earlier, I've got a Point crime book. This one's a bit battered, but whatever. This one is School for Terror by Peter Beer, going to school can be murder. So yeah, this one looks like fun. And then this really tiny, it's super slim, little book of ghost stories by J.M.R. Meager, it looks like. And uh, this is, yeah, just a little collection of stories. Not one I had heard of before, but I obviously couldn't resist this incredible cover. The next few are some that I think are from the 70s, so kind of a little bit older than, you know, my wheelhouse of 80s and 90s, um, but amazing covers and I couldn't leave them behind. So we've got Ten Tales Calculated to Give You Shudders. Ooh. Um, and this one um, is edited by Ross R. Olney, cover by Gordon Johnson. Shout out to them. This is copyright 1972. So yeah, really cool uh, cover. We've got The Ghost Rock Mystery. I mean, check that out, incredible. This is by Mary C. Jane. And this one, uh, a cover by Gerald McCann. And this one came out, um, oh, copyright 1956 actually. And then this printing came out in 1968. Um, so yeah, and this one, yeah, has illustrations in it. So yeah, it looks like fun. Um, couldn't leave that one behind. We have The Haunted Cove by Elizabeth Baldwin Hazelton. Great name, great cover, spooky AF. And uh, yeah, love that. Um, this one, uh, illustrations by Ned Butterfield. And this one is copyright 1971. And yeah, this one sounds like a spooky good time. And again, yeah, we've got illustrations in here. So really cool. And yeah, last up for the children's books, we've got The Ghost of Windy Hill by Clyde Robert Buller, illustrated by Don Bolognese. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. Um, anyway, another great cover spookiness all around. We've got some creepy lady there and a spooky house. Um, this one is, oh, we've got, an, yeah, more spooky illustrations. Copyright 1968. So yeah, I was just, yeah, really pleased to find these. I don't kind of stumble upon these older, like 60s and 70s kids book as often. So I figured I would snap these up while I saw them. Okay, two more books to go. The last one from that library book sale is this hardcover of Audrey Rose by Frank DeFilitta. Really cool cover art. We've got this hand and trees and this like, you know, gravestone statue. Don't know if it's really coming across, but it's cool, trust me. <laughs> and I have seen the film adaptation of this. It wasn't my favorite, but, um, Maybe I'll give the book a chance sometime. And the last book I have to share with you is one that was sent to me by the publisher, Tor Nightfire. This is Brainworms by Alison Rumfit. I read her debut novel, Tell Me I'm Worthless, and it was really excellent. So yeah, when I saw she had a new book coming out and that it was called Brainworms, I mean, come on, I needed it in my life. <laughs> and um, yeah, I contacted Tor Nightfire and one day this just showed up in my mailbox. I was very excited. So yeah, I don't actually really know what the storyline is for this. I, I just kind of know that I wanted to read it regardless. Um, but yeah, a couple of the uh, blurbs on the back 
uh, say brutal and terrifyingly visceral, um, gut churning, um, yeah, uh, disgusting and subversive, so count me in. Okay, so those are all of the books that I have acquired recently. I'm excited to have them, to add them to my library and to one of these days <laughs> getting around to reading them. Um, yeah, if there are any here that you think I should read sooner rather than later, then please let me know. So from me and my amazing jumper, I will say goodbye for now. Thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully I will see you again in my next video. Bye.